We'd like to welcome you to the City Council meeting Tuesday, September 7, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. Can we get a roll call? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Bolchini? Mr. Kimry? Oh, here. And Ms. Black? Here. We have an invitation by Ms. Black, and then we have a first meeting. Lord, I come to you right now asking you for guidance on this city, protection on our city, Lord, protection on our people in this city, Lord, the protection of our workers, Lord, with all this COVID that's going around, Lord, keep us all safe, keep our minds focused on what we need to do for you, and just bless this town as much as we've been blessed. We're doing so much better, Lord, and it's all with your grace and mercy. In God's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Amendments and approval of the agenda. So Madam Mayor, I have no amendments this evening. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. It has been popular more than second. second. We call for the vote. Mayor Richardson? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Clark? Yes. Awards, presentations, and appearances. And we have volunteers for Angus Goldstein Park. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Diana Pickles and I'm one of the volunteers at Angus Goldstein Nature Park around the corner. And you probably saw in the paper or some email that we were going to have a celebration on the 25th honoring what would have been Angus Goldstein's 100th birthday. We reconsidered and have postponed that actual celebration date until the COVID numbers improved. Knowing that there would be so many people reuniting and happy to see one another, it would be hard to contain even outdoors. We were gonna connect that as well with a reception at the arsenal and that would have been really terrific and i recommend you all go there if you haven't already that's a good theme the waterways in the meantime i passed out to each of your chairs um, a map of the park so you could kind of get a perspective of the scope and we may not refer to that again but it's just for your benefit in email this week i sent to each of you some of the plans that are going to take place as we kick off this 100th year of Angus Golson's memory and celebrating him through a Facebook account, which we're gonna launch. And it will have ongoing events and featured stories about him, memories, humorous, serious, and then some virtual tours. But you can also take his tours with points of interest being accented. That's one of the tasks we're going to work on is our 12 points of interest so they wouldn't be missed. It's so easy not to notice geographic features as well as drawing things. The timeline for the park I think would be a real significant and it's been recommended by Wilson Baker who was one of Angus Goldstein's buddies. They used to tromp around together in the woods. Wilson Baker wanted to make sure that we really nailed a timeline and I'm going to hope that you all have some information. We have big gaps. We know it started in the 30s and then was added to by donations of land and then the purchase of the park was expanded in 2002 and the dedication was in 2003 and a few sketchy dates here and there but we need more information. Anecdotal anything at all because we can usually track it down through some history people who are very interesting when they are discovered for example the president of the women's club has all of their notes and logs from all the years of its origination and there were many mentions of the park throughout that so 
if you know of anything, please bring that up so we can get that going. Um, we know the park is open because we voted for that to happen. However, it wasn't walkable. There were so many big trees down. We've been able to acquire some funds donated by um, the Florida Native Plant Society local chapter. They designated $2,000 and we've used 1,200 of it for clearing the Creekside Trail partially. It's only up to the first bridge and then the loop that brings it back to the pavilion. The rest of the trails are untouched and the bridges that need to be, the bridges are grotted regardless of Michael. They just can't be there to pay. So that's not safe. But you can go into the park and go for a walk and hopefully um, I'm getting out of order. I don't want to do that. Um, some of the goals that we have as volunteers are tidying the approach trails to the creek because the creek begins at the old swimming hole, legendary swimming hole, which is now each year we go through and we pull up all of this elephant ear. Right now it's about seven feet tall and thick, so we have to go back and do that all over again. But you can see the flow of the natural spring. There's one right by where you cross that and go up the concrete steps to the other side. But also there's two spring heads at the, that would be the northeast end at the hillside. So there's so much flow of water. It's, it's actually, beautiful sound if you just go there and listen. So we have our um, evaluation of all of education that we keep going through as well as the conservation aspects. We're taking out, well, we did take it out this past Saturday. Three of the volunteers worked determinedly on Saturday and pulled out all <coughs> the huge timbers that were holding up chain link fencing around what was many decades ago donated toria trees from around the botanical garden and they never really made it because they're at the downhill end of that open grassy field which is where sheep flow of rainwater inappropriate for the growth so they never made it however the chain links and all that had to be removed so we took care of that on this past weekend um as well as the fact that we have plans to use those timbers cut in half and use them as erosion control through the means of steps on some of the paths that are a little bit steeper and are really dug out by the rain. So we're going to reposition those. In the meantime, they're stacking up, creating a little pretend bench for the moment. Today, um, one of the volunteers who's with us now, Bob Farley, who's in the audience, worked and pulled up a lot of the grass along the asphalt, which is raggedy, so we have it tidy. We're going to recycle that grass in the erosion holes. Okay, seriously, um, one of the most important things that I think is fascinating one of our volunteers, Scott Copeland, came up with an updated plant list, which was started by Gil Nelson. You may have heard of Gil. He's pretty much working internationally now, but he lives in the region, and he also was a good friend of Angus's. The list is now up to 361 species <coughs> that we have documented in, through all the growing things from small to large. And that's an impressive list. If you ever want a copy of it, we can sort it by the common name or the species name, whatever you're interested in knowing about. Um, that particular list has been augmented by a delightful gentleman who's a professor emeritus, Dr. Lauren Anderson. I hope some of you have met him. He is undaunted. He will go in any area, no matter how difficult. When we crossed over a few weeks ago, the power line and went to the north side where the trail connects on the north side of the power line, he never said a word. He just climbed over those huge trees and we went through 
He couldn't find the plant we were looking for because it's probably buried now. But he was undaunted and he loves to come out. And I think mostly he enjoys being with people. So he contributes all sorts of new information. And if you just ask him one question, you better be prepared to listen because his stories are pretty interesting. So Dr. Anderson has really helped us with that plant list, which is a wonderful thing because it's vouchered, which is a term I'm trying to understand more about, in the herbarium, if you present a specimen, I believe that's what is called vouchered, and then it's documented for the area and it goes on a national database, as well as several other databases. And he does that, he enters all of that information and collects the specimen in a scientific manner, and then it's on view, it's for the public at any time at FSU. Um, part of our plan to keep going this year with the, keeping the attention on it is having a display of photos who've been donated by Floyd Griffith, who is a retired, I believe he was a prosecutor in Jackson County. At any rate, he's an unbelievable amateur photographer and an expert amateur botanist. And he has presented many photos for our use to be, and Bob has matted and mounted all of these photos, which will be available on this website, I'm sorry, Facebook page. As well, there's a man named Steve Whiteford, who is now doing watercolors for the purpose of this. And these photos and watercolors are to raise money for the park, for any kind of possible project that we need. So if you're interested, I'll pass these around. Among the projects that we've been working on are the ongoing observance of the success of the Taria trees, not just the ones that have been planted, which were I think it was four people received just under 200 seeds, wasn't it, Diane? So the Atlanta Botanical Garden shipped in coolers enough seeds under 200 for four people to plant in the region. And Bob planted all the ones in this part and they're caged over. So if you're ever out doing some cross country hiking, there'll be low cages just keep your eyes open. But the tall cages, which look like this, go around the pre-existing known Toria trees that have been there naturally. And there's, I believe, four. So we keep track of those. We go in and monitor those and send the data off. This is the work that Bob did today, working on them. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I was just saying the other day when we were there, I said, you know, we've got to make this place look like we're proud of it. So maybe we should do some of the cosmetics. So we, I have to watch what I say around this guy. And the next thing you know, he's got a tool for it and he's working on it. Here's some of the timbers. Now they look like chopsticks, but they're enormous. And we lined those up the other day. Um, so we know about Floyd providing, uh, and just so you, I'm going to cut it short because I could go on, it's just too much information to try and cover. I wanted you to think though about something that still strikes me at the dedication, the city had a proclamation that they were going to rename the park from the nature park to Angus Bolson Nature Park, and on that day, Angus looked really flustered, I mean he was funny, he told jokes, but his greatest embarrassment was that he forgot to take off his sunglasses, so he thought that was really rude behavior. And he was embarrassed later on when somebody pointed out that he looked like a movie star. What was the deal? But that's not him. And his closing statement was, mostly it's about keeping this park clean. He was so touched about this land and the fact that the city wanted to name it after him. He just wanted the park to be kept clean. And it's it's quite an amazing place because we keep discovering new things about it. 
I want you all to please come and visit and feel free to volunteer to help us anytime get a little note in the mail we'd love to have your help because mostly it's just four of us some days we have a big day of six but thank you the sin agenda is before you I'd like a motion to accept the minutes from Council meeting on August the 3rd with some corrections on item 10A. We've got four A's that have zero grade to be one made. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Byron? Yes. Item four for discussion? You have none. Okay. Citizens requesting to be heard on non agenda items. I have Ms. Donna May and Ms. Rosetta Anderson. Yeah, they're on, they're on, they're on the agenda later. Oh, she got okay. her nine. She said, okay. Are there any other citizens wishing to be heard on non agenda items? We have no. Public hearing, ordinance 564. We have two tonight, Madam Mayor. Uh, the first one uh, is dealing with the second reading of the ordinance, and I will defer to the city's attorney. I'll read that ordinance by title. It's ordinance number 564, which is by title an ordinance of the city of Chattahoochee, Florida, repealing the time restrictions for the sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption on premises, providing for authority, providing for the repeal of city code section 6-4B, providing for conflicts and severability, and providing for an for consideration on second reading. If you would invite the public to speak, please. Anybody on this side have any comments or questions on ordinance? Uh, a point of correction, uh, I think it says for, for consumption home premises, and it says all premises go much. Oh. Yeah, that's a, what we call a patent ambiguity. Where were you last month when I needed you? <laughs> we'll make that uh, correction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody on this side? All the red. And this correction. To the public, to the motion. I offer a motion that ordinance number 564 be accepted with the correction being done. I second it. It's been properly motion and second. I call for the vote. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kimry? Yes. And Ms. Bart? Yes. Public commit comment regarding intent to apply for a CDBG grant fund. Brazil, Florida has a mitigation grant, Mark Cook Net Program. 
Yes, ma'am. Um, approximately eight months ago, we applied for some hazard mitigation uh, grant funding to fix the number of lift stations throughout the city. We also uh, want to put new generators at our wastewater treatment facility, as well as a new generator, placing of a generator at our waterworks, um, giving us the backup in case of uh, emergencies. Uh, this is funding that was basically uh, in light of Hurricane Michael to mitigate things that happened. And here, of course, was water, sewer, uh, things that. So we came up with that. We were approved for it. It was a 75-25 max grant program. So we got approved for the 750000 or whatever. And so we went back to the governor's office and asked for the 25% hardship more or less. And they developed this uh, this way where you could apply CDBGR for the max. And they've already told us basically that we are approved. And the dollar amount will be $236,728.25. But the process for that, what you're accomplishing tonight is the actual CDBG public hearing process. Um, and I'm required, there is a signing sheet. If anyone has public comment, we do need to capture those uh, their information. And I'll also read this and it will explain things for you. I'd be glad to answer any questions. But um, the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity has allocated 109 million in CDBG ER, that's disaster recovery fund to the hazard mitigation grant program, match program, which will be administered by DEA. As an applicant under the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the HMGP, the city of Chelsea is eligible to participate in the match program made available through DEA to reimburse the non-federal portion of an awarded and eligible HMGP grant. The match program is funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Community Development Block Grant, Disaster Recovery Allocation for Hurricane Michael Recovery. Described in the Supplemental Appropriations for Disaster Relief Act, 2018, Public Law 115-254, and the additional Supplemental Appropriations for Disaster Relief Act of 2019, Public Law 116-20. The estimated max we are requesting is $236,728.25. Applications are due 930 of this year. Um, the generators will be in place to provide a secondary source of power to the following locations. Our water well, which we listed as the emergency operation generator down at the warehouse where all of the operations run out of during a time of emergency where we're feeding people in the housing, people from the outside. Our wastewater treatment plant, which there's a generator now that was put there when it was constructed, but it, it, as you saw during Michael, it failed then, it failed on numerous occasions. So we will be replacing that. The Martin Luther King Master Lift Station Generator, Drury Lane Master Lift Station, River Landing Lift Station, Congo Road, Preston Bottom Lift, uh, Doll Baby Lift Station, and Shepherd Street Lift Station. And we require those of the floor for public comments and make sure we take any information as well. The floor is now open for public comment. Uh, anybody on this side? Right on this side. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to get in there. Do you desire any action tonight? We didn't ask for any. I mean, we were just required to have proof of the public okay. hearing and public comment. But just for safety's sake, if you would, pass it to the camera. They didn't listen. Also, motion to be allowed the city manager to apply for the CDBGDR granting program for the hazardous mitigation to make up for the 25% funding. Second. Thank you. Call for the motion and second. Call for the vote. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kimry? Yes, ma'am. Mayor, could we go back just for a comment from me on item 9A, uh, that title uh, saying off consumption off premises, that is correct. This is uh, relating to retail liquor sales uh, and uh, 
and uh, it is in fact a consumption off premises. So that, as written and as read, was correct. Right. General business. All right, several items tonight. The first one is a, if you recall at our last meeting, Cutting to Main Street appeared before you and had requested some funding. Um, you instructed uh, they how to meet. We did that, and as a result of that, I prepared an agenda item with two actual funding requests tonight. But the first one, the Chelsea to Main Street request for funding, I attached an item with the background and the request. Um, it's now at first twelve thousand. I think it was fourteen thousand originally, but uh, twelve thousand dollar request from Chelsea to Main Street. And uh, they are here tonight, and I'll also be glad to answer any questions that I can. Uh, so, what the city, what they're wanting, Main Street, is twelve thousand dollars to pay the bill. Is that what it's for, or? Would you like me to come up or stand back? Thank you. Alicia Coon, the treasurer of Main Street. Um, Ms. Panamander couldn't be here today. She's her mother's very well. Her mother yeah. does call her quite by surprise. Um, but anyway, um, the money request is a support overall for Chattahoochee Main Street in general. Um, just like we talked about last month, it is support back back to where we used to be um, when we used to reside in the clubhouse we you guys provided us a building at that point and a utility bill in that location and due to hurricane michael we were relocated and we have been on our own if you will ever since then to provide our own place for chattahoochee main street office to call home um, we have been for doing all that it takes to keep our organization together ever since Hurricane Michael occurred, which has included our office having to move three different times because buildings became in, uninhabitable uh, multiple times. But anyway, long story short, um, basically the support is going to allow us to continue to do what we are doing, but it will help us to be able to do that a lot more easily so that the fundraising things that we are doing for the community um, and that we have been doing um, will go further um, and will go beyond what is absolutely critical and necessary to keep the organization going and together. Um, so this is not just um, that, but it will be, a, it will help us to be able to continue to make what we have been doing go farther than it has been the past three years, are we almost three years now? Mm -hmm. Almost three years out, October 10th, be three years. Um, so the, if you wanted to know, I'll just tell you that, um, you know, of course, as, as a, even as a nonprofit, we re record taxes, we keep our books and so forth and so on like we're supposed to. Um, and so these figures are based upon um, the last um, two years worth of um, tax returns that we have filed. Um, and just kind of a mean average of basically what our operating costs are and are anticipated to be. Um, we are trying um, to uh, acquire the building that we live, that we reside in. Um, the Pickens Pharmacy building is owned by uh, Mr. and Ms. Hubs and she is a native to Chattahoochee. And so she are, uh, would very much like for us to be able to uh, purchase the building and, and call that Chattahoochee Main Street home from, from now on, um, and they're working with us very uh, cooperatively and patiently, um, and so we, we have plans to apply for a grant to potentially purchase um, that building and um, do the improvements that are necessary. It needs a new roof and multiple things that they have not been able to do to that. So um, our staff will continue to, uh, we, we're working in the process of uh, another grant um, to help renovate uh, Heritage Park. Um, so anyway, so that's that's about the summary of it. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. 
Oh, I will make the comment that this is, as you guys said, start somewhere. This is a start somewhere. This is in a, it's either at this amount or end all be all. So this is a, this is, we didn't know where to start. So we just started so that we can co communicate back and forth. So we did what you asked us to do, to start somewhere. So this would be, I guess you might say, the greatest amount that would be the most beneficial but if there's uh, negotiations of less than that or what have you this is certainly a negotiation not a dictatorship or whatever so thank you thank, thank you. you I think this is a question that comes earlier in the year. Change at the uh, first public hearing on the 14th, but 
what I've done since I've been here actually is because it's the same amount. We haven't increased it. What you historically had there, which is split among the things I just mentioned, and you start turning around whether it's you know, three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, you have it. Um, if you still want to be able to do something for the kids at Oakner School or I'll do something in downtown at Christmas. Um, we, we do a breakfast each year for the parade, you know, the Martin Luther King celebration. And so those things add up. You have to be careful there. So, I mean, yeah, there's a couple thousand dollars there. If you want to spend it at that, what you want to spend it on next year, it is currently in your proposed budget, the same amount it was this year. You just have to decide well, how you're going to divvy it up. Well, I know what Chevy Main Street has done. I do, I see it all the time. But I'm like this how do you tell one organization yes, one organization no? in the city because they're both trying to do for the city or somebody else come up another civic group come up and there's no money to give them this is what job i don't like i don't know what the solution is because like you said we still have halloween if we didn't have halloween the city would lose we do the martin luther king breakfast and i don't know you got the Christmas parade this year. Yeah, got yeah. Christmas parade this year. motion just for this to be second. I first second. Yeah. So now you need to Yeah. I said open the public comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just a public comment. Since uh, Alex Cohen's 24 Angel Street sits on the board of uh, Chase Main Street, Main Street. I, I do want to say thank you for your consideration. All our requests for funding uh, for, for the operation and support of our organization. But I, I'm, I'm going to set my title around this board member from uh, Main Street, and just as a citizen that lives in Chattanooga on Angle Street, I, you know I find it very hard to understand your rationale when it comes to supporting organizations or businesses within the community that have a track record and a history of working to prove this city economically. Main Street is not your fly-by-night organization that comes by here and asks for five hundred dollars to do this or do that. To sit here and deny this request, it's your privilege to do that. But to sit here and tell me that, you know, you don't have the funds, when I just sat in a meeting last month and see that the city of Tennessee is in the best financial position it's ever been in, Texas. You're nowhere, no, nowhere near debt. And the debt that you keep referring to as Hurricane Michael, Every month we get our utility bill, it's on there. That bill is being paid. There's no question about what it's going to be paid because it comes through your utility fund. But to sit here and have X number of dollars over here, four or five million dollars sitting over here, and you can't put $12,000 into an organization, it, 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 just, it just eats me up. And, and at one point, the city of Chattanooga was giving Main Street $60,000 a year. $60,000 a year. Now, we ask him for 12. And, and it just eats me up because you you sit here as though it's your funds. I know you, you, you are, you're obligated to make decisions or whatever, but $12,000 for organization 
that has been a part of grant totaled over six hundred thousand dollars in this city, and you deny us that request. I'm appalled at it as a citizen, and I'm disappointed. You as you as my counsel, because at any point you say the budget has already been prepared, can be already been prepared because you haven't even had your final first uh, first public budget here yet. And any time you deal with the money, you can go back into a budget amendment any time you choose to. You know what the budget amendment is, right? Okay. You can go back and move money where you want to move money from. But I just want to let you know that as a citizen, I am highly upset about that. That's my right, and that's your right. But I just want you to know that. $12,000. How is this city going to grow? It's going to move if you're not willing to invest in it. You know? But how do you, I, and I understand, I agree. And I understand, you, and I participated in everything I participated. But how am I going to tell you, yeah, and tell another group? You put guidelines and you put criteria in there. How many organizations can come before you to show you that they've, they've been, in, basically, been a part of $500,000, $600,000? investment into the city. Everybody come up here is not going to be a rough organization. They have twelve dollars. You look at each one, just because Peter come up here to get five dollars, Paul don't, don't mean Paul's gonna get five. You know? So just like you say no to me, well you'll be able to say no to them. Right. You know, that's just the way it is. So what you what you're saying the city should do is make a guideline set up before we have people come to us and ask for the money, right? Yeah, it's always good to have a policy and procedure guideline that's related to disbursement of funds. Okay. Yeah, it's always there. It's always there. So we don't have that in place yet. So I, we, I don't. I don't, we, don't, we, don't we don't have it in place, yeah. but the guidelines are to give out money to people or groups. So what we need to do is ask city manager and the lawyer to figure out what the guidelines are, or if we're going to be able to donate money. No, you as a council at some point will have to make some decisions about what the guidelines should be. Well, I mean, that would be with all yeah. of us, but we would have to have guidance from the lawyer. Yeah. If but don't we, use the excuse that you don't have the funds. You know. Oh, yeah. Don't, right. don't, don't sit here on a trunk of money and say you can't go in there and get $5 out and pay for something. Don't don't use that excuse. I mean, if you don't want to fund Main Street, fine. That's your privilege. But just know you got one citizen so mad as hell when you leave here tonight. That's all. Thank you. <clears throat> May I speak? Gene yeah. Stevens, 314 Morgan Avenue. Um, let me offer you an alternative to your criteria. How about a cost benefit analysis? Look at what a group has done for the group that brought in money for you and how much they brought in as opposed to whatever you had to spend or, or what they're asking for now. You don't have to have a criteria. Y'all, that's what y'all are here for, is to make a decision on each issue at this moment. Now, if you want to kick the can down the road, you can. But there's been a lot happened in Chattahoochee over the last couple of years. And Chattahoochee Main Street has been instrumental in it. And let me take this opportunity to applaud our leader. Pam Bedley, who has been tireless and has been absolutely amazing in her efforts. And we're starting to see the fruits materialize now. I don't, uh, I'm not sure how many new utility accounts have been opened, but somewhere around a dozen or so just over this, this year, I think. Is that right? And we can keep that going. We have people calling Chattahoochee Main Street practically every day. Uh, Pam was telling me about some man that was calling from either New Jersey or New York, or he was originally from New Jersey or New York, and lives down south now, and he wanted to come up here and open a business here in Chattahoochee now. I heard another person tell me that they've seen on Facebook or something somewhere where Chattahoochee is really up there in a nationwide assessment of small towns to consider and move to. Chattahoochee Main Street's had a lot to do with that. And I think y'all need to sit here tonight and consider it. And you can make the choice tonight whether you want to or will or not. Thank you.
video. I think you all are getting hard upon us not to tell the video how it takes a while to get into Kennedy Creek. But everybody should know who I am. I'm a Daniel generation and I should be a part of it. I'm a volunteer <laughs> board member for Southern Kennedy Creek, also an original musician. And I was asked before I retired by Ms. Miller um, to actually come and be a part as a volunteer person on board. But since then, I've been involved ever since I retired in 2015. And just to be honest, it's all volunteer on our part. And I think all of you all know that. And I'm a person. I don't charge any musician innovation musician. I don't charge for anything that I do here in this community musically. I've had all kinds of people call and ask me, when are we coming back? This is uh, on a Friday, and they constantly call me all, all the time for things for music and interaction with the public. And one thing that I found out, I travel quite a bit, uh, DC, Baltimore, Detroit. But one thing that I love about this city. You really don't see the riches in the people. I mean, you got love of the people here. And I'm not here to speak to anybody's uh, personal feelings about anybody. But my point is that I grew up here. I can see a lot of things from the past as well as the present. And I present myself as a board member. And I'm hoping that um, whatever can be done from the council and the city of Kennedy Creek, I would love to see more volunteers. You know what I'm saying? I hear a lot of people speaking about what they want done, but you, you hardly ever see faces and hands on. And I think I'm not boasting about what I've contributed because there's a lot of people, not only myself, fellow board members that are here tonight. We came and we represent this city. And believe me, wherever I go, I speak of Chattahoochee. I was just downtown Washington and then I long ago, and Chattahoochee was mentioned by my aunt that used to live there who passed away. But I want to say this to you all, with all, with all honesty and all heart, I hope that you consider what is being voluntarily done here and look at the record of what has been done. I think it speaks for itself. My name is Ari. You can call me anytime you want to talk to me. I, I feel free to speak to me. But I just want to present myself to you today as a sister to Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Person asked, but a quick question. When um, Mr. Simmons mentioned about the, the fee that we pay on the light bill every month, can you elaborate on where that fee is going? That fee covers the interest payments on your loan. It does not pay any principal. You know, when we reduced, uh, we paid on the loan, we reduced that fee by 50 percent, but it basically covers your interest charges on the note. Uh, we, we have to generate the funds to pay that back. Of course, there was some theme of funding, but um, not enough. So that, that pays the interest. And what will happen over this long time to do in 2022 if we don't have the funds to pay that long? Oh, goodness. Um, we hope that's not the case, but what we would have to do because that is. Um, you know, we were able to pay early on the note, which it prohibited, so they were willing to work with us. Um, but say if you only had two or two and a half million or something, you would have to uh, go with another financial institution or have that one do another year or six months for a lower, you know, what, what you couldn't pay off. And Ms. Rhonda, when I put you on the spot, how much of our funds are liquid and how much of them are tied up in CDs and then we can't get our hands on at this time? Well, sir, a lot of the CDs are, spent, are restricted for specific use. For example, our fireman's pension fund, that's restricted for specific use. Um, some of our debt obligations require us to have reserve funds, that those funds are restricted for specific use. And without having those documentation right here, you're telling me I would be, um, it would be incorrect for me to give you a dollar amount, sir. So, what I was getting at some of the funds that we've got, and then pleading the amount that we're as our assets are not rigid. We can't say all the obligated for something that else. That is correct. That's correct. That's what I was doing. And also on the advice of our auditors, we do have to have certain money in reserves because as y'all know with COVID, 
a lot of times our um, pet revenues and our shared revenues um, are down from where they have been previously. There is an up, there is a speculation in the future that they're going to, to come back and revitalize, but you know, we don't, we're not, you know, positively that we're not guaranteed those at all. So we do have to conservatively budget our funds so that we can go from year to year and have some reserves in case we do have another storm that we have to. And on the grants, we have to front the money on the grants. We are, they're reimbursable. They don't give us the money and let us pay things. We have to pay up front and then be reimbursed by the grant goals. Mayor Richardson? No. I'm sorry, I'm not sure about the motion. The motion was to deny. Ms. Williams? No. Mr. Kinley? Yes. And Ms. Black? Yes. Uh, next agenda item is a similar item. It what was the final vote? I didn't hear. Two no. And two yes. Is that? Yes, sir. Two, two no. And two yes. Two yes to deny and two no to not to deny. Okay. So we got the Pardon me? Where the impact? Well, no. I'm just trying to figure out who votes for what for the next election. Uh -huh. Next item is a similar item. It is a request for funding for this was the three thousand dollars of funding from the Martin Luther King Committee. Um, yeah. The latest here, they have representatives here. They'd like to speak. Good evening, everyone. My name is Donna Bean at Quiet, 337 African Street, Southeast Florida. And I just want to tell you all some of the things that MLK has done since we've been in existence. We have, been, we have done free backpacks and supplies for kids. We have been there on the first day of school for kids to walk them back to school. We have um, painted some of the extenders at the school to make the school look better. We have uh, did teachers' appreciation dinner. All this what we have done has come out of the MLK members pocket, not out of nobody else's home. So we you know we like some kind of system. We can go on and on. We have the talent show. We did the fourth, we did some great Chattahoochee. We also did the fourth of July with the, the city of Chattahoochee. Then we came back this year and did the main tree. So the uh, MLK has done quite a bit, more or less for the school and for the uh, community. So that's why we are trying to get at least three thousand dollars to help us continue to do what we're trying to do. Uh, we have some other members here that might want to say something. Allison, I think she wants to say something. So we have we've done a lot. The only thing that I would add to what Ms. McWhite has said is the years that I've been involved with MLK, we have never, I have never, and from checking with them, we have never asked anyone for money. What we have done is put the money out of our own pocket to do what we need to do. We've done lots for the children. We've done haircuts every year. We've done lunch bags. We've done lunch. We've done a couple events for the teachers that we do each year. We do something to thank them and appreciate them for being who they are. This year, we had the, when the school buses arrived at the school, we had gotten the police chief to have offices there and we were there to welcome the children off the bus and tell them, thank you for coming back to school. You can have a wonderful school year. So we've done lots of things like that and we never asked for any type of reimbursement. I think the reimbursement that we're asking for is, and I can say this, it's less than what we put out of our own pockets. I can tell you, I put half of that out of my own pocket to do what I feel we need to do 
And the reason we did that is because we believe in the children. And we know that we need to do things for them to make them feel important. And we need to make the teachers feel important. So that's what I would add to what Ms. Johnny May has said. And thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Johnny. Anybody else on this side has a seminar? On this side. Can I get on this side? I'll make a motion to move the process and I'll be able to send the nation that I think we have. We'll just sit right here. What is it? We need to have some shadow on it. I'll work with it. I'll work with it. I'll work with it. I'll work with it. I got a second. Second. Is there a motion? Second. Ms. Thomas and Paul, Yes, ma'am. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kimber? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Clark? Yes. Adam, 10C, uh, Riverland and RV Park Sewer Trust Change Order. Um, the item explains, you probably remember this, it has been some time uh, since you saw it, but we, we did a bid for phase two of the uh, RV park, River Landing Park. Uh, all of the, that was actually in July of 2020, July 24th, 2020, we opened the bid. The uh, low bid was $412,000, and they ranged way higher than that. So we brought it to the council and I uh, asked you to go ahead and approve it, but to, to give staff time to go back and seek additional funding, uh, look at some options, negotiate, I mean, because that just wouldn't work if you would have been spending city money. And uh, our intent was to spend grant money. So um, we applied for a couple of other funding sources. Uh, we had got one from DEP, um, about $182,000. Uh, so what we have done is negotiated with the low bidder, which you can do uh, on the state uh, guidelines for bids, you know, public uh, bidding processes. And um, over time, we had to reduce some things out of the project, and uh, the contractor had to look at his cost, and then we also got tangled up with prices for everything going up because of the uh, COVID and shortages. But anyway, we have uh, reached an agreement, which is part of this change order, if you so uh, approve it tonight, that uh, we can proceed with phase two of River Landing Park. That's the campsites down on the bottom part of the hill. Um, putting in, and that will go, you know, presently that was, there was no sewer or anything down there. This grant we got from DEP is specifically a sewer grant to put the lift stations and the, the dumps, the hookups. So, uh, when we put campus down there, now they'll all be full hooked up. And that's the, the grant we're working off of to pay, pay this contractor with. So, again, we're avoiding spending the taxpayers' money, city money, <clears throat> just redoing every project we try to do. But the, uh, and the engineers here who were very instrumental, you know, Dewberry, and all just negotiating and working on these projects to try to, to try to get a deal that would work for the city. Um, uh, this change order, Resulting in a $229,931 net reduction from the original bid. And the new amount, the new contract amount is $182,238. And uh, there'll be no fiscal impact on the city of Seattle future. This is a DEP grant. And uh, so the engineers here, the contractor, the uh, low bid, the phase farm is here as well. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Yeah, if you do execute tonight, we're, we're ready to go to work. So you're saying we have enough for the grant to finish all that work done on the bottom of the... It will be all of it. It will finish all of our water work. So we're going to uh, we're gonna continue to seek money. Like I said, we've applied for two others we were denied on. But the campsites themselves and the worst case scenario is we will do it with our crews. What I'm talking about there is the pad, and the grill, and the picnic mm -hmm. table, and, and we'll just do those and pay as we go along if we're not able to get any additional 
funding out there. So all of this stuff here will be the utility type stuff that's in the ground there. Well, all the hookups, all the camp spaces on the lower section have complete hookups, or will there still be some camp premises camping? In the back, we have already designated that. We do presently rent on the low side, far back, is our primitive area. Yes, sir. And we will continue to have that. You know you couldn't go without listening to me. I know. I know. She tells us that. All right. I've been, I've lived in Chattahoochee and done a lot of stuff. The only thing I have been against from day one in the city of Chattahoochee acquiring that campground down there and taking the largest piece of tax area off our road so we didn't get enough. Now, I would like to know with what's up there right now and the money we spent, what is the occupancy rate of what we got on the hill right now? How many nights is that? I'm also a contractor and is it here and there? I didn't bid on the project. But how, with what we've got sitting up there right now, how many units, how many campsites have we got, and how many nights are they occupied? Uh, I, know. I can tell you what's down there today, and I can tell you in money, because I periodically report to them on the in money, not in night, but in cash. Doc. Doc. Yeah, I, that's what I follow. Okay. I don't. I really don't care about occupancy. Really. Okay. Dollar wise, what is it brought into us right now? We even pay for the Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, whenever it comes down to grants, well, people don't understand. I need to talk. To, well, people don't understand that the grants got to be paid back. You're speaking to the to the council. Okay, I'm just saying, a grant is not free money. A grant is our money. We pay for it through taxes. Okay, neither here nor there. I'm just trying to say, what we've got sitting down there right now is not paying for itself. I had my sister came in from Illinois, stayed down there for two weeks. She went to the city council or the city utilities right here. Three times tried to pay. Nobody knew what to where to pay. Nobody knew what to do what. You know, if it's a money making situation, I've got no problem with it. But right now, the upper unit, which the gentleman right here can tell us what new occupancy rate is, is it breaking even so the city of Chattahoochee can afford to pay this free grant back? Or where are we at? Why do we need more campsites when what we've got there right now is not being occupied? Well, number one, we don't have to pay any of the grant money back. Again, yes. everything is I just reported to him. I strive to do everything, unless instructed otherwise, to not spend Chattahoochee money. Okay. Whether it's sewer, water, electric, whatever, okay. uh, RV parks, new property at the dam, whatever, that's just my philosophy how I do things. I'm with you. So you're ready to change you, you and I have known each other a long time. Yeah. I, you know where I'm coming The from. RV park is, uh, yes, it makes money. Yes, it makes money. Yeah. I can't give you exact figures, but the only thing you really subtract out of there is the electric bills. We have a park host, but he's not paid. Um, he's right back there, you can tell you. But, um, and at times, like July the 4th or more, you know, there's holidays, as with any campground, you don't have higher occupancy rates. You know, you can fill exactly it up. I know exactly what you do. We can't all the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's never going to be full all the time. Look at our campground full. But there's times that uh, I'll pull my cap off, scratch my head, and say, I wish I had 100 of them this weekend. You know, that's just the business nature of the beast. But I was instructed when, when I first came to work here, you know what that place looked like before Michael. You know what it was. They didn't appreciate it. They instructed me that I wasn't appreciate it. Do something about it. And that's what we've done. We've sought out grants to, and we have an increased number of camping sites, we've cut them in half. With all total of the camping right. sites. I mean, I, I know that. We've cut them in half, right. but we've improved them so it's a quality experience. We could charge a little more and have a- What are we getting at our night? $30. $30. Okay. $30. And that may be too high. It's possible. It may not be enough. Well, we're so close to the government sites for, you know, we so 10 bucks for a visit. So that's, uh, but that's something we'll have to decide when we, when we get there. 
it is getting better and um I can't remember the dollar amount the last time I reported, but you know it's gonna be more since then. But you probably twenty five we're probably at twenty five or thirty grand for this year. No one pay for the bill. The bill was a grand. Yeah, we didn't have to pay for the bill. We don't play that grants. I'm done. You yeah. bought the pits for it. We're good on the pits. You bought that. Yeah, I did. I bought the pants. The grants, what people do not realize in the United States and Georgia, mm -hmm. is that grants have got to be paid by taxpayers. And we are taxpayers. So whenever we get rid of a bunch of these kajillion dollars worth of grants, it'd be different. Well, the thing it is, um, we were working on it this week because there's later on in this agenda, there's another grant that'll really make you see. We're getting and we're proud of, but since December of uh, 19, 18, or whatever, uh, it's about seven point. You're going to get your next one, you're going to get a nice tight up total with 7.4. Seven million four hundred thirty-two. She's working on that, but that's what Chetty just received. And I'm me for one, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm proud of every dollar of it because we couldn't fix all it. We cannot buy things and fix things without grants. There's no way this city could support the improvements, the expensive improvements we've made. You cannot fix things that are needed without grants. No way. Well, that's right. I agree with you, but the park is not needed. I'm done. Thank you. I just had one question, and that is about the industrial permitted process, I guess, in PEP. If you're in a floodplain, how can you have a septic system? It's all been permitted, and we also had an archaeologist had to come because of you know the nature of our site. Right. Came and did an assessment about the uh, Indian uh, issues. You know, check everything. Right. But no, ma'am, we covered covered all those bases. Okay, that's good. Because I was asked that before, and I forgot to ask. Everything that. down there, we have to have archaeological surveys done. With all due respect to my friend, I've been involved with the park and Mr. Press now since December. We've all worked terribly hard to make it look nice, look good, be presentable to the public. And as of today, we've got five renters. The sixth one is coming in. Every two to three weeks, some of them are monthly working for the DOT, uh, different places. And it's a work in progress. And Joe has helped us, or helped me. I mean, I don't direct nobody. But Fred Snell sends them down there. And we do the best we can with what we've got to work with. And you go down there right now and go check it out. It looks nice. It has the potential to be one of the most beautiful places in this part of Florida. And if you make it that way, people will come. And and they are. We had a lull this summer a little bit, which is normal. But now coming into the fall, winter, I expect it now that the word's out, I expect it to be a good deal for everybody. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I think it will be better once they get more pool hookups. People won't be able to just cut their stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, the thing is getting that full hookup. People are not going to drag around and dump stations all that. They don't have to. It looks really, really good down there. I've been down there uh, watching some of the people that are down there. Yeah, and we're not we're not rushing to we're trying to make these improvements, but again we're seeking grant dollars to do this and um so it does not create a burden on the taxpayers of this city, you know, to have that campground, which is a benefit to all of us, um, for years to come. Because it will be a generator, a cash generator. And it brings people to town too that, you know, comes up to town and goes to our uh, stores and restaurants and I've met a lot of people around here that come to camp you know, people you know that's not from here. And so it, it's just a benefit, it's just one more element of our plan for making the making the city better. I'd like to ask a question, Mama. Yes, sir. Is it going to be run at the campground? Um, 
for an RV park because there is a difference. Like I heard you say you have a couple people down there that rent monthly. We um, do have, but the council did approve a monthly rental for them. No, it's not going to become, I think, what you may be leading up to what it was before. Yeah. No, ma'am, we're not. They have to leave. They can't stay we're there. Although, as I know, at the Corps of Engineers parks, you can only stay two weeks yeah. and then you come out and then you can go back in. Well, that's, and that have helps have out because you keep the riffraff out mm -hmm. like that and you get people like my husband and I go camping, okay? That's right. And I, I'm not comfortable to go into a place where I know people are living there on a monthly basis. You no, know, the council limited it back when we set the rates and uh, last year when we set all this up. Uh, but no, ma'am, we, we, we won't okay. turn back into what it was. That's what I want to know. I've only got one more thing to say and I'm done, but I'm just saying whenever I go to that new pretty gate we got down there mm -hmm. and I look up on the hill or drive through and go over and I see half of them full, then I say we ought to spend money. If you can't fill what you got there and take care of what you got now, even though it ain't costing us nothing, there's you know no money out of the city fire, it is a lose situation. So you want us just to give back to Great Money? Pardon me? Would you want us just to give back the Great Money and let somebody else have it? No. Well, then what do you want to do? If they can do it, if they can do it, please. The Great Money is ours. Forget it. Forget it. And we're trying to improve it. It's our okay. money. Okay. I paid my taxes and I want all my tax dollars coming right back to this city. All right. Do it. That's what I'm trying to do. Amen. 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 River Land Super Park Project. I second. Okay, then popping and working and second. Can you call for the vote, Ms. Honor? Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kimberly? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Ms. Bass? Yes. Thank you. We will have one form we need to get signed tonight. Make sure she doesn't leave it outside of that. But thank you. We'll be moving on with phase two just as uh, fast as possible down there. Okay. Add to our river landing park facility. Phase, this phase two renovations will be minimally invasive to the upper part of the park. Well, the upper part. Not, part it shouldn't interrupt the, the not, 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 not at all. No, phase two is totally simple. Um, yeah, it won't affect what the spots we have at all. They've got their own separate gate at the bottom to work in and out of it. Right. Um, all right, the next item is just kind of a housekeeping item, but this is a resolution for adoption of the statewide mutual aid agreement. We need to do this uh, each year when the just in case, God forbid, something was to hit us and we need to get crews in here. Uh, this allows us to tap resources throughout the state. Um, everybody who is in this mutual aid agreement, you know, receive those services, which not only includes private, like less crews, but the, the state, should we need fire trucks, law enforcement, and all of those things. So we would ask you, the council, to approve that this evening on the main side. I make a motion to adopt the, the Department of Ed Emergency Service statewide mutual aid agreement. Second. Uh, if I could add, actually, your your motion is to adopt resolution okay, number 2021-01. Okay. I make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-01, the adoption of the Department of Emergency Service statewide mutual aid agreement. Good work. Second. Now I have some people motion Do you have anything? No. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kimberly? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, 10 item 10 E. This agenda, you know, we probably should just send this back. Oh, no. Okay. This agenda item seeks council approval of a grant agreement uh, with the Florida League of Emergency. Management uh, American Rescue Act plan financial one million six hundred one uh, thousand seven hundred thirty dollars. This is the one half payment of uh, what we're approved for. You know, we fell under the small cities 
counties and large cities that received theirs and had direct instructions from the federal government, from the Treasury Department. Cities under 50,000 that had to come through the state. Um, and the final rules and guidelines are not quite finished yet. Um, we'll have those in the very near future. But also, you will, smaller cities will receive one half now, and from your adoption date, one year later, you'll receive the other half of the funding. But the um, request tonight, should you choose to do that, is for the $1,601,730. I make a motion to accept the American Rescue Act task order, the time management expert. Is that what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. What you doing? I'm starting to mark you to see if I need to send it back. Oh, oh. we ain't sending it back. American Res I make a motion to accept <laughs> the American Rescue Act task order, the time management expert. No, you're on the wrong item. No. We'll uh, that one I'm trying to go ahead, y'all. I make a motion for 10 E, American Rescue Plan Act funding agreement. And authorize the mayor to sign. And authorize the mayor to sign. Can I get a bulletin and blow what y'all want me to sign? We want the money. Not a word. Thank you very much. I think uh, that's a good thing for the city. Final item under general business that I have for you tonight, six approval of a task order with the management experts. Uh, that's a company you have already been able to accept to do technical assistance on different grants and so forth. Um, but to approve them a task order for them to perform tasks assigned by the city manager to complete the requirements of the American Rescue Plan Act funding agreement. That will be all our reporting. And so the rules are not quite yet finalized, but whatever projects you decide to do um, in there, how you're going to distribute the money, there's a bunch of paperwork reports and, and uh, tracking of it, depending on what you do, that has to be sent in to PEO, the state, and she will perform all of the record keeping. Um, again, the her uh, fees for that will be paid out of the American Rescue Act, and we'll do that soon. If you would, and approve for the uh, mayor to sign. real quick you know the um well we already talked about the grants so i was going to update you on that we're going to give you a final tally an exact to the penny tally but i think that's quite an accomplishment for this council and uh, what you've accomplished the last couple of years with the grants when we um we're adding them up it's, easy. it's, it's way i'll be honest with you it's way ahead of what my goal i set for when, when i came here um by a couple of million dollars so You've done very well with that. Seven point four million dollars is going to be help for this recovery. So I just want to mention that. Also, the waterways exhibit, if you remember. I don't know. I know some of you have been there already, but I just want to let the, the public know and council that it is ongoing and it's uh, it's worth a trip. 
what trip down there, so it's a good thing to have it to see the trip at the museum. Um, the public hearing dates on the budget, you know, the first one is on the 14th, next week, and then the second one will be on the 28th, but uh, first, the first of the two required public hearings will be next week on the 14th, 6.30, right here. And we'll be glad to answer any questions the council may have. Thank you. Mr. Simon. A couple of things. Um, at our last meeting, I mean, Richard talked about the, the conference that she was going to that she just didn't attend it. That the electric car was the thing that was, was going to be all. Um, does the council think that the electric car is something that we need to? Since we are a city owned utility, is that something that we need to be checking that by having a charging station? There might be another source of revenue for the city if you want maybe to see. And I don't know, do we cross lines with that, Mr. Miller? If we, if we, if we I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. If we, if we check into having charging stations for electric automobiles, since the city owns the utility, are we crossing the line getting into private business not allowed somebody else to get in private business or would the city be out I would need a little time on that issue so uh, if you give me a call uh, so we can uh, you know, get the full scope of what your consideration is uh, I could I could review that and give I, don't, a report. I don't know how many electric cars we have in town I can think of a couple but I see cars riding around I don't know. You're going to see more. We're going to see more. We're going to see more. And yes, you can do it. Answer your question. Uh, other people are doing it. I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we think other municipalities are doing that. But it I also just, I just don't have any familiarity with it. Okay. Uh, with, with the, the bills that are in Congress and all, the bill back better and all up there. That's what so they talk about. You may go in and it not cost you anything. We, we are following that. Um, if that stuff finally passes Congress and President signs it. Mm -hmm. There's all kind of money in there for infrastructure. I mean, all kind of money. Well, I was just thinking, since the, the city owns the utility, mm -hmm. it's not like we're doing it from a uh, uh, co-op or anything like that. It might be. You're selling uh, your electricity. We're, we're, we're selling electricity. You're selling electricity. You're selling it by the, whatever it is. By the electric. Well, yeah. Yeah. there are municipalities who are doing it who do not provide electric services. So, okay. So there, oh. there's that. Yeah. So. But I think we need to pursue it um, because if you look at the, the, the wattage rate, the pulling, yeah. when you charge one of those, mm -hmm. um, and with what I foresee in the next 10 years, I didn't buy electric, I just bought a hybrid truck because mm -hmm. electric's not out yet, but it's a hybrid, it's coming. Oh. Um, you're going to see them hooked up to people's homes everywhere, but yes, I think you will need to have one in this parking lot, a number, any number of uh, campgrounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe one up here, some town somewhere, but no, it's something we definitely, I think, should pursue. Uh, People are traveling, like on that sign, getting off I 10. Mm -hmm. That will make people come into our town. If they need to charge, then That's right. they can come into the town. And we'll make it convenient, and then it also brings people to town to visit our shops and restaurants. But no, I think we can do it. Uh, people are already looking at it, and I think the money is coming to do it. Because okay. I see a lot of cars coming to Tallahassee and more to the hospital. And there's a lot of electric cars mm -hmm. coming from Tallahassee. Um, Robert, have you heard anything about, uh, I know one municipality here locally is requiring their employees to be vaccinated for COVID. Have you had any backlash? Have you heard anything backlash from that? Uh, not yet. You know, that's relatively new since they've done it. And actually, the effective date is not here yet. They announced it, uh, but there's an effective date, I think, in September. Uh, you know, there was some backlash within their organization oh, I'm sure there was. Almost immediately, but it hasn't happened yet. So to see what actually does happen will be interesting. We need to watch that because we just need to watch that. Oh, did you get ready to do this? He retired. He finished his drop. <coughs> and, I, and, and I miss him dearly. 
We got a fine crop of country in Georgia when Hardy and Bridge came in. It was sprayed Friday. It was sprayed Thursday or Friday. 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 Yeah, Friday. Yes, that they took care of it. You should see size of it in about a week. Oh, yeah, it's getting brown. Is it already turning? Yeah. 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 It was Thursday or Friday they came and got it or sent a contract. It was Thursday. We still had that sidewalk issue that we were all over them about. I don't understand that, but we have a way to do it because they said they can't just come fix it. You know what I'm talking about? Across the past part now. Um, they can't just fix it. They're going to have to redesign it and rebuild it. Well, with DOT, that means it has to go to engineering and environmental and all that before they can come pour concrete. Um, that's good. Do you cut grooves anywhere that run down here? Not the DOT. Um, but we are aware of that when that bark falls around it. We, we're in steady contact with them about that. But yeah, the cuts in wood's bigger than that. Council members, I'd like for y'all to be thinking about some guidelines that we may or may not need to, we may need to put in place for rates of donation or money for next that you're going to use. Now, for most communities, if they were going to do that, it'd be their apple or flow. But you don't have any. So I, I don't really know where you start. Uh, I, I mean, just sitting here listening, it'd be very difficult for me to design you something when I don't know where the revenue stream is. Yeah. If you were going to do it, it'd be the Avalor. Uh, 
And y'all dealt with that issue last meeting. So, uh, you get caught in the crossfire. You know. That's all I have. Very briefly, um, Mr. Pesnell, and thank you for the work that you've done and being there for the different little projects out in the community. When I'm calling on you, I know that I've been calling on you quite a bit here lately, but when they called me, I don't know if anyone else you know, called you to assist in getting it done. Glad to do it. You continue um, doing that. Also, tell your, your workers, thank you so much for the hard work that they've been doing especially working along with me and helping me with the uh, second harvest. Uh, they've been a great help with that. Also, on September the 23rd, uh, second harvest will also be at the Red Center starting from 10 until all of the supplies are given out. Um, if you know of someone that's homebound that you think that they would appreciate uh, being served for second harvest, please let us know because we have been doing delivery due to the fact that we have quite a few homebound people. Ms. Rhonda, thank you so very much for all of the work that you've done. You've helped us out a whole lot. Mr. Miller, can't thank you enough. Every time I phone you, you're right there on that phone talking to me to help me to understand a lot of the things that are going on especially when we get our packets. Thank you very thank much. You. I'd like to thank all of the citizens for their coming out tonight with their input, whether it was good or whether it was bad. We truly appreciate you, and we do need all of your ideas to help us to get this city to go forward, because we would like for our city to be a great place to live in. For the chief, thank you so very much for being there for me uh, and assisting me with some of the things that I've been asking you for. I've also heard a lot of the uh, citizens talking about the work that you all are doing. Great job. Please continue. That's all I have. Thank you. Did you ever hear from um, Mr. No, 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 no. The, seat, the county commissioner about the um, ambulance. Did he ever talk to the people from Dream Room when I asked him last time? Are you referring to the slow response? Yes. Yeah. He didn't, but I investigated it myself. Okay. It was dispatched. It was not the ambulance drivers on the second one anyway. Okay. On the one that we were talking about, uh, it was dispatched. Uh, so are they going to train the people to do the job correct? But we can't blame that one on the... Uh, no, I, I heard it was dispatched. They were putting yeah. it out. And yeah, I checked it myself because see everything over there is timed and dated and recorded. And, uh, it, because yeah. that's just not acceptable. I mean... And it's not fair to blame that on the uh, no. EMS driver. That, that the dispatch needs to know. If they're going to make us do it from Quincy to call the, our people, <laughs> and like our police officers need to know when an ambulance goes out because like you said, he could have got there first and at least gave comfort to tell the. Yeah, uh, Chief and I talked on that too about following the ambulances if they could, like when one comes in town, the police coordinate something. So uh, I'll leave that with him. And also, I forgot to mention my comments that the Board of County Commissioners put the uh, fire truck funding on the agenda tonight. Well, that was the next thing I had uh, fire truck. So there, um, and I've been following the text. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of going back and forth, but it, they, if they put it on their agenda tonight, the same night you had me. Sure they did. Um, but they're not booked. Are they going to go to that $150,000? But we'll, we'll know the outcome of that tonight, hopefully. That's, that was my second thing about the fire truck. Um, but we got to get that fixed about the ambulance because that's not acceptable. We have a lot of elderly here, elderly people here, and 45 minutes is too long. I think everybody's aware, and uh, again, I do not want to blame that on EMS at all. After investigating it, I take that for it. Well, I did. I heard dispatch because they would even dispatch from what I've talked to people. If they were in Chattahoochee, sometimes they would call the van an ambulance and they were out here. But then you, you get that change so often. Right. And, the, and the training that they get is so short. 
Right. And they are not familiar with the geographics of the different areas. And that's the problem that we are having uh, with that. They're short and clean, yeah. but I understand it's not isolated. Again, Tallahassee has the same air dispatch, I think, overall. Uh, there's just a, a shortage of available trains. I want to I want to share something. Um, I, if we can get that to work, whatever we can get done at, over at the Florida State Hospital with the EMS, mm -hmm. I think Chattahoochee, uh, aside from the rest of the county, would, um, I think it's almost a no-brainer. Um, I went to a call last week, a uh, young man, 21 years old, cut it, severed his toes with a lawnmower. And I had to sit there with him and try to comfort him for 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was rough. It was hard mm -hmm. to, to watch him in that agony. And, you know, in the constantly call dispatch, like, hey, you know, where, where are they at now? Where are they at now? And it's, it's stressful on that person and the officers and the, the family. And, you know, it's almost, it's not fair, mm -hmm. you know, so whatever can be done, um, I know, I know we come here and we meet, but and a lot of times you don't get that that real time experience. And I come, mm -hmm. so I can share that. So when I get those experiences, I, I think it's I think I have a duty to, to share it so that can give an urgency to the people that that are the powers that be. You know, so I want to share that. A uh, 21 year old, uh, you know, just, our truck was doing transport for the hospital at the time. Yes. Yes. We got back a long time. Yeah. I mean, well, I like we was spoiled when I was young because we kept one here all the time. And but <clears throat> I mean, if somebody's having a heart attack, somebody's having a stroke, that's not. We, I, I can't. That's not feasible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I got beat down. Like you know, with, you know, I'm I'm a cop. You know, I'm not a doctor, but yeah. they they look at me like I'm supposed to. You know, and it's sad. I want to help. You know, but so, um. Do, what do you think we need to do? contact the? I mean, I mean, I understand that the county, it's a, it's a county thing. It's not a city of Chattahoochee no. thing. So dealing with, that's why I say if there was any kind of uh, remedy or conversation that can be had with the Florida State Hospital, because they can be specific to, Florida, to Chattahoochee. Mm -hmm. And if there's any way we can use, uh, I don't know if it would be a, a dollar amount, or I don't know what it would, would it take, but if, I think it's almost mandatory that we have that. You know, because this that's just one case. I could tell you many more, mm -hmm. you know, so. They used to transport their own, you know, for yeah. years until about a year ago. They transport their own ambulance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting to the point where I've heard, you know, citizens say, well, I'm not, I'm just going to jump in the car and try to wing it myself, you know, and then you're going to risk getting pulled over, getting into an accident, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it's it's like you get desperate, you know, and, and it's, you shouldn't you shouldn't sit on your couch at night and, and wonder, you know, hope just pray that nothing happens to you. I mean, you yeah. should you should expect to have some type of service. You know, so. I, well, I hope we don't get into the same situation inside the county with fire with what's going on with that issue. But it's uh, very distinct possibility. But we'll we'll see what happens tonight. If your next meeting, you're gonna you know I'm gonna have to bring something back to you. Online, on the yeah. And the county have to make a decision from there. What the green for. You know what happened there? Sycamore is covered at night, so we we cover we're covering there the the ground. But uh, this part of the world right now it's us and not covered. That's it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we'll see what happens. Don't hush my mouth. I'm sick of the size of county not getting what we need. And they always like you said, it's not they're having to make no fire truck. And that's when it's in. God, I mean, we're not dummies, we understand. They forget us by the years. Now, this hasn't just happened, it's been happening. Well, I know, but, but it's times that we have to stand up for this side of the county. Well, we'll I mean, get all that bad. It's coming up. Well, I'll go with you. That's all I got to say. Thank everybody for coming out tonight. I would like to thank you for your presentation on the Gulfstream Park. Thank you very much. Thank you all the volunteers that helped me. Thank everybody at Main Street. 
Modesty part thing that we talk about in the tradition. We're moving forward. And it's, it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes when we can't do what people want done right then. But we're working on it. And the quest, we will come up with a criteria for the um, giving out money um, and see us for our next budget. We'll be working on the budget team. So some things need to be asked for earlier in the budget because all of our funds are not liquid funds. So it seems like we have a lot of money, but we, it's tied up so we can't give, go and just grab that money and move it to the next fund. And we can't take funds from certain places because everything we have now, we need it. So we thank you guys for coming out. And if there's nothing else, I would like to apologize for what I said to the city council, city manager, anybody involved, because whenever it comes to grants, I don't know what I'm talking about, but the only thing I know is that being a private businessman, if it doesn't make a profit, it's not simple. I'm done. Thank you. There'll be nothing else. Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you.